Civil war, national war, international war, global chaos is coming and it's very soon. Um, and there's lots of ways you can look at it, but ultimately it, God's letting it happen. It's his way of pouring out judgment on unrepentant people that are lost in their sins. They are re in rebellion against God. They don't recognize him. They don't um, obey him. They don't have any respect. They don't have any repentance for their sins and he's had enough you know his long-suffering patience has been going on 
for millennia. <laughs> and, but this is the time, the end times in the Bible that was written about and prophesied, and it's at the door. And um, now how do I know this? Well, I don't claim to be the most um, in touch Christian hearing directly from God in the spirit, you know, getting personal visions and dreams. You know, I'm not, I, that's not me. I'm not special in any way. The only thing that's special about me is my particular weakness. And my particular weakness, I guess in the most general sense, is um, I've always been a bit of a um, eccentric, um, unconventional thinker. And um, I've also suffered from health problems. I get really tired, I get really tired. And, um, you know, that's prevented me from holding down what most people consider to be, you know, a worthwhile career or job or anything like that. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, I'm in a situation in my life where I've you know, tried to be a musician and I've had work in that capacity and other capacities, but, um, you know, Currently, I'm you know picking up my little boy and with Ellie, and um, you know we're struggling in various ways, and she's she's not a believer in Christ, and my family aren't, and um, but I'm I'm trying to show that there's fruit in my life because I'm a more mature, more calm person, despite my failings, and you know it's. The Bible says those that humble themselves will be exalted and those that exalt themselves will be humbled. Well, you know, I'm just trying to show humility and integrity and honesty in, in where I am and my understanding. Anyway, so how does that play out with why I have feel like I have a knowledge of what's going to happen soon in the world? Um, so as a result of, um, like currently, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not working apart from obviously, you know, just <laughs> being a family man, um, and you know, obviously, you know, I spend a portion of my time doing music for the church, and I feel that's important um, because I've, I have the musical background, so I'm using those skills where I can. But um, you know, I spend a lot of time just being really tired um, on my back, on, my, on having to lie down, and you know. You, in those times, I can I can listen to the Bible on an audio, or I can you know listen to a YouTube um, lecture or teaching, and I do a lot of study. I do a lot of study, and I do a lot of contemplation because when you when you're really tired, I mean people. It, I should use the word me. I hate that phrase. I've had, you know all my life I've had me. I hate that phrase. Whatever it is, I don't know. I get tired. I'm a Christian now, so I think it's probably a, dem a demon, some demonic um, stronghold in my life that I haven't managed to be delivered from yet. But one way or another, it causes me to, to contemplate and seek God a lot and do a lot of study. And because I've done a lot of study, um, relevant, sort of up-to-date study on you know, worldly events and how that ties into scripture, um, I feel like I've got quite a good um, overview on, on where the world's heading and the truth is um, there's so many um, biblical um, teachings and that, that, that tie up with what's going on in the world now and just as a, a brief explanation a, a big part of the Bible is to do with um, typologies where Something would have happened in the Old Testament, usually, um, and it's a real event, it happened, but it was foreshadowing something that happens later on in the New Testament, or the, you know, the times we're in now, the end times, some at the door. And these typologies, um, once you understand what they are and what they represent, you can see what's happening in the world now, and see what, what's happened, and it proves that God's word is true, and you can see what's, what's at the door. And um, Obviously, a big one was um, obviously the, the ultimate one was that Jesus was prophesied to, to come, and he did. Um, but I'm not going to go into that right now. The one I've, that's really relevant for right now is Israel. Uh, all the Jews were scattered for millennia, 
um, in different countries. And in 1947-48, they came back into their own land. And um, that was freaking predicted, not really predicted, it prophesized in the Bible. Um, you know, and people in the world are just like, yeah, well, whatever, that doesn't mean anything. But, I mean, it really does. Never before has, uh, you know, well, Jewish people are, they're kind of a culture and a religion and um, a race almost combined, but they were scattered amongst the nations, but they kept their identity, um, you know, for, for thousands of years, and, and then they came back together. Um, and that's amazing. And, and it happened on God's timetable. The, the year when it would happen was prophesied in the Bible, and it happened. So this is showing that God stuff, God does stuff on His timetable. You know, it's planned out beforehand. He knows when it's going to happen. He, he explains when it's going to happen in the Bible, and then it happens. So if He's pre you know, I use the word predictive because from a worldly point of view, people understand what that means, but it's not a prediction, it's going to happen, that's what prophecy is. Um, if he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen when he says it's going to happen. There's no, there's no ifs or buts or maybes or ambiguities, it's going to happen. And um, I've come to understand that, well, he's got another prediction, prophecy, and that is that the year two. 2017 is a prophetic year and first of all you say oh well that's all right that's come and gone okay so god works on his timetable 2017 isn't finished yet according to god's definition of the year because the year starts and ends in the spring so we've got a couple of months left and and obviously rome the catholic church changed the calendars uh, back in the day when constantine um started you know coming to power infiltrating christianity and pope gregory changed the the, the calendar, but um, just a quick way of understanding um, what the months mean. Um, obviously, September, Sep is seven, October is eight, November is nine, December is ten. Hang on a minute. Oh, right, so we've got two more months left. So that's just um, um, just to show that we're not out of 2017 yet. And, um, well, 2017 is, is, is a jubilee year, it's the 120th jubilee, which means that we're at the end of the 6,000 year. Now obviously if, if you believe in evolution you think the world's millions of years old, but that's just NASA's lie. That's just, if you want to believe the Freemasons and the satanic paedophiles in the government that pay for the corrupt science, then you can believe that we all came out of a big bang but that's just silly. So what actually happened was the Lord God created the world in six days and he explained what he did in the Bible. And you either believe that in faith or you think you're cleverer than God and you go your own way. Um, but the Bible says the righteous shall live by faith and that's what I'm going to do. That's what I try to do. And I'm not perfect. I fail every day. I, I make mistakes. But I'm humble enough to, to, to come to God with that and accept that and, and just be open with that. Um, but every day I sin less. You know, it's my goal to sin less. Uh, I'm not sinless, but I sin less. Um, and, you know, it's through Jesus' blood that I have faith in His righteousness. That's how I come before the Father. And um, I pray that I'm accounted worthy to escape all the things that come into pass and they're coming to pass so you know at the end of um, last year if you want to call it that uh, Trump made a, a declaration about Jerusalem that he was going to recognize it as the capital of Israel and it's like the world and his dog got up in arms about that oh you can't do that you can't do that and um, this is just um, the playing out of biblical prophecy that um, well all these countries ganging up against Israel, how dare, you know, they have their capital. Um, you know, it belongs to God, and he gave it to the Jews, you know, so anyone that comes against that isn't, has got a problem. And most countries voted against that. And all countries are in rebellion against God to some degree, so this is why there's going to be a worldwide flood of trouble. And um, um, the only way you can escape it is by being in, in Christ, giving your life to Jesus. There's no physical place 
on the earth where you can escape the tribulation. There's, there's no solution, there's no escape plan. The only escape plan you've got is leave. That's, that's the only one, and that's God's escape plan, and he's prepared it for you, and it's a very good one. And now is the time to accept it. And if you don't, then... What can I say? I just pray that you, you bear, take these things in mind, in heart, so when it all kicks off, the penny drops then at least. Because when there's no food, and there's no water, and there's no peace, and there's no security, and there's no nothing, everyday life is just completely gone. Normality is gone. Um, you know, they'll be chipping people, um, the mark of the beast in your right hand or your forehead, and um, that'll be how you can buy or sell anything, food or whatever. And um, and you'll be starving, and you'll be like, oh, well, I haven't got a choice. But if you do that, you're you're condemned straight away. So you can't do that. So you have to choose to, you know, take the consequences, and ultimately, you know, you're gonna have to die. But that's how you gain your life. If you're in the tribulation, you have to maintain your faith in Jesus. Um, and it's grim. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone. But it's better than hell. That's obviously internal damnation. And um, all of that, you know, you can avoid all of that by coming to Christ now before the rapture, before the tribulation. Because the rapture and the tribulation start or happen at the same time. Um, I'm very, very convinced of that from all I've read and studied and all the, all the brothers and sisters in Christ that have had dreams and that, um, visions and words from the Lord. That's how it's going to go down. He's going to take the church out of the way so they don't have to go through the tribulation. And then it will start. And it comes in the form of worldwide trouble, chaos, financial meltdown, wars, um, New York being destroyed by fire and water and everything that follows from that. Um, it's very grim. And, you know, people just look at me like I'm crazy. And honestly, you're crazy. Because World War One happened, World War Two happened, and there's been all sorts of little wars, if you can call them little, it's not very little if you're in one of them, ever since. There's been wars all the time, and you know, so the idea that there's never going to be another world war is incredibly naive. And all the evidence, let alone from a biblical perspective, just from an observational of world events perspective, is that we're a precarious situation. But because we're all, um, you know, under 78 years old, nobody's really known a, a, a war in this country or a world war. And so we just think, oh, it'll never happen. No, that, that used to happen in the history, but not anymore. Because, like, you know, well, it, get real, it's going to happen. It's totally at the door. And it doesn't matter what you think of me. Oh, I'm a he's a loser. Oh, what a loser. What a, get a life. Whatever, I'm trying to warn you. Yeah, I'm a loser. I give my life to Jesus Christ, yeah. You want to call me a loser? Whatever. I'm trying to warn you. I don't hate anyone. I don't bear anyone any resentment. I just hope that someone listens to me. It's not much fun, you know, being the mad person from everyone's perspective, but from my perspective, I'd rather have this understanding of truth and conviction of the Holy Spirit give me a, a fairly good overview on what's going on and, and what, what role to play uh, rather than just kind of living in a worldly way for the worldly values of this fallen world so let me just pray for you now anyone watching this um, our Father in Heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Father God, thank you for my brothers and sisters watching this. I just pray for their, their hearts to be turned to you, their hearts to be open to you, their minds to be renewed by your word. Your Holy Spirit to convict them of their sins, of the urgency of the, the message and the truth that I'm trying to convey here through your rack, your Holy Spirit, Lord. Um, I just pray for freedom, deliverance, and repentance. And Lord, just pray that you grant repentance to, to these folks that 
have been in the world and you know there's so many people trying to get by in the world trying to live trying to do the best for their families as best they understand and I understand that but I understand that you are holy God and you 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 have a high standard and we all fail it because we're all in a fleshly broken state in this fallen world and it's only through coming to Jesus that we can be redeemed and justified in your eyes Lord and I just pray that my brothers and sisters in Christ or to be <laughs> that I pray that everyone out there comes to you and, and, and gives their lives to Jesus so they can be in Christ and they shall be saved and they shall be of a, of a repentant contrite spirit and, and come to know you and, and be redeemed by your, your grace and mercy Lord Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalada Badada Gashi, Sadada Manada Gashi, Sadada Badada 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 Gashi, March the 16th is the um, end of the, you know, the Jewish year um, when they um, correctly recognise that the year changes. Um, that I'm sure it will have happened by then, and that's what a lot of um, Bible scholars and teachers and prophetic people, that, you know, generally have a, a close <laughs> relationship with God. Are saying and and it, whereas I you know I wouldn't have known that completely that, that specifically without teacher other teachers' help. It it feels in my spirit that I I can I can believe that because I look around at, at, you know at the signs at, at, and the, the devil is just literally he's, he's screaming like getting ready to take over have his little antichrist rule and it's going to be awful if you're here for that and God's not, God doesn't scream but he's, he's calling loudly and saying guys get ready signs are everywhere I'm trying to warn you but you know you have free will you've got to you've got to make a decision for Christ you've got to make a decision to say yeah this world is broken and I'm broken I'm part of it and sorry God I need your forgiveness sorry Lord, please forgive me um and um, you know, if you come to that point and you're there, then great. Um, you know, um, contact me or anyone in the Last Reformation or the church. Um, you need to get baptised as soon as possible um, for the remission of sins, and that's baptised in water and baptised in the Holy Spirit, um, because it is impossible for a man to enter the kingdom or woman <laughs> to enter the kingdom of heaven if he's not born of water and the spirit you, you need to be born with, of the Holy Spirit if you don't have that you can't you, you know you, you can't face God you can't um, come into his presence you can't come to heaven um, it's just not possible you know the, this earth is coming to a, a finish and there's, there's two places you can go and you've got to be converted with, you've got to receive the Holy Spirit to be able to come into God's presence. It's not that he wants to send you to hell, it's just that he's got to because the law is holy and he is holy and we've all sinned so unless you get washed clean in Jesus' blood, unless you receive the Holy Spirit, you can't be redeemed you can't come to heaven you can't be in God's presence and if you're not in God's presence then you're in outer darkness, that's, that's the default alternative so Get real. I pray. Just to bless you in Jesus' name.